Friday, October 20th. We are in unusual technical difficulties in that the ace cameraman here has no tripod. So any laughter in the background, any motion is not me, it's the technical department. Um, the financial markets are, are overtaken with um, the stock market behaving in, uh, in an exuberant fashion, which, if nothing else, emboldens the Fed to proceed with gradual tightening. All of the economic data are running hot, which does the same thing to the Fed. And the only issue is, who's the Fed? Uh, Janet Yellen's term expires after the first of the year. Mr. Trump is engaged in a series of interviews to see who the next Fed chairman will be. And uh, the financial markets are just about collapsed in trying to figure out which each of the candidates would mean if nominated. And the nominees have to go through a Senate confirmation process, which leads to testimony before Congress. The Fed is so sensitive in financial markets that just to who the nominee is has the, the chance to produce some chaos. Uh, the principal chaos provider would be John Taylor if he's named. Uh, uh, most of us in the financial markets think he's a nut. Um, uh, 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 there's a Mr. Warsh uh, who would produce minor consternation in markets and everybody else would be okay, would be a, a continuation of yelling. Uh, that would be on the moment that the new name is named. The second event is then what, what the new nominee might say about something, like the weather, or God forbid the NFL and standing for the national anthem. They, the, the, if the new, the new Fed chairman is going to speak at some moment, and I, we're all going to overreact to it. And then in the nomination process, the nominee before the Senate the Senate will be poking at the person hard to see what their intentions are, especially at variance to the attitude of the Fed all the way for, through Bernanke and Yellen. Now, that's been a dozen years of remarkably predictable Fed policy, and uh, really, I think, the most, uh, the finest execution of policy in the history of the Fed. And so I wrote, copied, posted, near this video, uh, a brief history of the Fed uh, from its founding. The first chairman sat down in his chair and grabbed a gavel in 1914. Uh, from 1914 through the various Fed chairmen, um, excitement of various kinds, different presidential terms to date. And it's not a pretty story, which leads the political right and business right to wonder, why do we have a Fed? And if they can make it that far, the next question is, why doesn't the Fed just have a rule book to govern what it does and take all of this judgment out of the way? And the answer really to both questions is, we haven't tried modern life in any modern nation without a central bank. I don't know anybody in markets who would like to try. They, we obviously can't be trusted. The public can't be trusted with money. The president can't be trusted with money. And Congress can't be trusted with money. And so we trust the Fed. And it periodically makes um, extraordinary mistakes. And the history is in the short copy next to this video. Um, as you read through it, if you read through it, um, some will be reassured, if only by the comedy involved. Um, others will be alarmed either at the comedy or the reality of it. But I do invite you to have a look. And I mentioned in the copy the one really good book on the Federal Reserve. Uh, it was written 30 years ago, and it's titled Secrets of the Temple by William Grider, who used to work for the Rolling Stone. And Grider's account of the founding operations theory, uh, uh, creationist theories around the Fed, written in 1989, and the detailed account of a really deep comedy of the Carter and Reagan years. Uh, if you want to understand what the Fed does and what it's about, it's a great book, and Amazon's got it used. It's been republished in paperback form, and um, if you're going to be anxious, you might as well have the details. Meanwhile, rates have risen. Uh, they look as though they may be about to break out into higher terrain, uh, partly because the Fed is coming and the rest of it because the Fed should be coming. That's what's buried in the economic data. So on that joyless news, do have a good weekend.